Hey there, this is Boris, but you might know me as Jogging House. Um, I made a little Zoya patch that I thought you might find useful. Um, what it basically does, it turns a three head tape recorder into a tape delay. So it only works if you have a device like this. Several manufacturers make them. Um, it also works with many reel to reel um, recorders, so it's not limited to cassette in any way. But you need three heads. The, what this means is the third head um, enables uh, the machine to play back the tape while it records. So you don't have to stop, rewind and then listen to the tape. You can, you can monitor the tape right now while recording and this is mandatory in order to make this happen. Okay, so if you have a machine like this you probably heard of the technique or trick um, to turn something like this into a, um, into a tape echo um, by routing it through your mixer via a send and then also feeding it back into itself for feedback and so on. And then you may also have heard of the trick to add a digital delay so you can control the delay time without modding the actual tape speed of the machine. Um, but as I'm explaining this, you might already think you need a whole bunch of stuff to make something rather simple happen and it's probably not worth it. But you can actually do everything and more with just a Zoya. So um, yeah, I made this patch. And since uh, there are a few things to, yeah, to keep in mind while using it, I thought it would be better to um, make a little video about this. So um, yeah, let's start. The OP1 is just my sound source here. Plays a little very simple sample and um, that's all it does. I connected it to the left, yes, <laughs> to the left input of the Zoya and I connected the output of my tape machine to the right um, input of the Zoya. Then I take the left output of the Zoya and connect it to my audio interface or your mixer, whatever your um, signal hub is. And the right output of the Zoya you route back into the input of your tape machine. So this is important and it only works if you connect your devices like this. So the actual delay is also mono due to, the own, due to Zoya only having two outputs. This machine is actually stereo, but um, I'm only using one input pair, so I'm only recording on the left side of the cassette. If you have a mono cassette player, it would actually sound better because um, it will use the whole width of the tape, making it a bit more hi-fi. But I think it still sounds beautiful as it is. Okay, so as I already showed you, if you just connect your sound source, it will sound just as it does. But as soon as you start recording, you hear a delay. And this is um, basically the patch helping you out. So what this patch or the, the uh, individual modules of this patch do, um, first we'll have an input and output section. We get to this in a bit, but these are very important and also a feedback, um, feedback parameter. These, device, uh, these parameters, I, when you load the patch, I set them rather low <laughs> and um, I recommend keeping them that way um, until you have everything connected and checked your levels because this patch can get very loud and very uh, much into self oscillation quickly and it can damage your ears or your speakers or headphones so please um, yeah be aware of this connect everything check your levels and then start um, playing with the parameters and not the other way around okay so at first we have a mix parameter and at around 50% um, it, depending on the 
preamp of your machine and what setting you chose, but I dialed it in so that around 50% the um, delayed signal has the same volume as the input signal. Then we have a delay time. This is actually a digital delay that I put on the third page, so just keep it there, don't mess with it. Um, and this, what this does is, um, it is 100% wet and it delays the signal coming from the tape about with the amount that you set it to. So um, you're basically cheating by moving the tape um, signal in time and adjusting your tape delay length. Other, if you would want to do this all analog, you would have to mod um, a device like this with a speed control and changing how fast the uh, tape is playing. So this is a rather simple cheat. This wobble is coming from the delay, uh, from the Zoya, not from the cassette. So now you hear it's way slower. Which I find pretty nice. So let's look into the feedback section. I dialed it in so that at 100% feedback it will almost loop and only go into self oscillation very slowly. You might hear it now, it gets um, a little brighter and if I keep it running like this it would kind of fuzz out at the end. But let's dial it back and um, look at the input and output section because um, what makes tape delay or what is one thing that makes tape delay sound beautiful is the saturation so depending on how hot you or how loud you hit your delay uh, your cassette um, it will change the sound and not just be louder but it, it will affect the tape and um, yeah provide some tape saturation so there are two VCAs and the one for the output is, I named it two tape minus 12 dB, which means minus 12 dB is actually un unity gain, zero dB. Um, that's because the, the VCAs on Zoya only go to um, zero dB. So um, I boosted the signal before and then lowered it again. So if we increase this, you will notice that the delay sound gets louder. And then we have an input section which is starts at 0 dB and um, yeah, you can use to decrease the sound again. So you have the, you have more tape saturation and if you will overdrive, but um, you still can keep the overall volume in check. So these should always be adjusted at the same time. Also these parameters um, influence the, the feedback. So if you run the signal out hotter than in the preset, the, the feedback parameter will go earlier into self-oscillation and not um, when fully cranked but yeah, depending on what settings you have, it can be a lot earlier. So again, please um, <laughs> keep it in mind. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's important to not cause any harm. I usually set these to equal amounts. Minus 5 dB means from 12 it's plus 7. And then I dial this in with minus 7 and so it's al almost the same volume again. Hope this wasn't too confusing. Um, I'm starting to confuse myself, but um, yeah, it's the most important part of the patch. After, so now we have the delayed signal, tape signal in the Zoya. So I thought it would be nice to all, we could just root it out and then it's a tape delay. Everybody's happy and it's a nice little patch, but I thought it would be cooler to actually give you some options to affect the signal. The first one 
is um, an EQ that only um, affects the feedback chain, not your input. So whatever you set here won't, any, won't have any effect over this. I already made some adjustments. I, I cut out a bit of low end and I cut out a bit of high end because if I keep it at unity, you will hear that it's actually a lot more hiss than in what I demoed. So at minus five, um, I think it's like a, like a good middle ground um, and still kind of sounding bright, but also not too noisy. But yeah, you can you can adjust it to your taste. I also um, f made some dips at 250 hertz and 980 because I think in these uh, regions when you use synthesizers, there can be like things can get muddy in these regions. So it's just like a little yeah sound help. After this, um, there's a phaser which um yeah i just think it's is cool for, for on tape delays hope you can hear it um if you play around with it you can you will probably notice it rather fast and uh, again depending on how how hard your, you hit your signal, how much saturation there is. Um, this also has an effect on the other parameters. Yeah, so after the phaser, there is a low pass filter that has two functions. Um, for one, you can use it to um, to calm any high end that um, results from from higher feedback um, rates it's maybe more or less like a like a double safety from um, compare uh, together with the equalizer but I also added two modulation sources one is an LFO that I set to um, random hope you can read it um, and now it um, affects the low pass, low pass <laughs> filter and um, basically creates random um, stages of it being open and closed in the feedback path so um, you have a little more yeah a random element and also like something that makes a sound even more alive and um, there's also a real random um, module which you can see is super fast so if you affect your low pass filter with this it all it creates like basically uh, a noise kind of sound which can sometimes be really nice to make to dirty up your signal without actually using noise or any other additional sources just to yeah make everything a bit more crunchy yeah just adjust it to taste or not at all Yeah, and that's everything we do to the feedback path. On the next page, there are two master. Um, let me get the phaser away. Um, on the next page, we have two master effects. One is a chorus, which um, yeah I put in because many of the old um, classic tape delays have also a chorus. So yeah, it's just there to stay in, in a way true to the original and lastly there's a reverb in normal um, tape delays you will find a spring reverb but Zoya doesn't have one and also I'm not the biggest fan of spring reverbs so I added a plate reverb 
and um, yeah, it just adds some space. And that's it. So now you can start experimenting with the settings. Tape delay helper for the Empress Soya. Hope you'll enjoy it.